Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today, let's talk about the MIDI editor in Cubase 14. Cubase in general has no shortage of editors. If you select any MIDI part that you currently have in your project and go up to the MIDI menu, you're going to see a list of options. The key editor, the score editor, drum editor, the list editor, the in-place editor, the pattern editor. Some of these have been in Cubase forever. Some of these are new additions. The one we want to look at today, although we may touch on these other ones in various ways, but our focus is going to be on this key editor. If I take this option, then I get this, which has been called for the longest time a piano roll view. You have various windows. You can see your MIDI notes. Down below, you can see where the controller lanes. Keyboard on the side to help you see what notes you're looking at. All kinds of tab options, options to choose your tracks. And of course, the Cubase toolbar, which is confusion waiting to happen. If you click on any empty space, you get options to add more buttons or uncheck buttons that you have. You have an option at the bottom. You can choose to show all of the buttons. Then you have the option to reset all. Put the typical view up here. Becoming acquainted with these buttons is probably one of the best ways to become acquainted with the power of what's in this editor or any of the editors in general. We'll be looking at that. What is MIDI in the first place? If I look at a note and click on it, I can hear what that note is. If I go to my arrow keys on my computer, I can start moving these notes easily. Up, down. I can move through the notes left or right. But MIDI on its own is nothing but a representation of some kind of data. That's the difference between MIDI and audio. Where audio is actually capturing some kind of audio performance, MIDI is just replicating what you actually hit when you hit a keyboard or hit a drum pad. It's just a representation of some kind of data. There's a lot of flexibility in understanding how to manipulate MIDI data. And the MIDI editor is where you carry out those kind of tasks. Over in the left area, you have a visibility pane. Right away, you want to be aware that you can customize the way this thing looks. That depends on this upper right show hide visibility buttons. And I'm using the full editor, not the lower zone. You could hit this down arrow and bring it into the lower zone. Or you can hit this up arrow and bring it back into a full window. But you can see I can show and hide the left pane, the area where all the tabs are, down where the controller lanes are. And then really important, you have this little cog wheel. Anything that's not showing up, in this case, the status line I'm going to put in here and global tracks. You want to make sure that anything you expect to see is checked with these options. But right away in this left area, we have this great option where we can double click on any other MIDI track. And that becomes what's in the editor, allowing us to not have to bother leaving the window, bring other things into view. But one thing, if you've never experimented with it, you're really going to want to check out the tab over here that says the scale assistant. Once you click and open that up, you have all kinds of options to choose from. And you have drop down lists that allow you to pick specific keys and then next to that a long list of all kinds of scales really interesting to just click on the keyboard drag through the sounds that we have and then try changing some of these different scales now before i play anything another button you're going to want to check out up on the toolbar you have this option that says pitch visibility on or off if you don't see that right click in a blank area and make sure this option that says pitch visibility is checked when this is off none of these scales have any effect and i can just play all the keys but when I turn this on, a couple of choices become apparent. If we look at this down arrow, we can see the pitches from the scale assistant, or we can see the pitches with events. Because I already have some notes in here that says show the pitches with the events, the only thing I have here now are the keys that I actually have notes on. Completely clears away anything else except for what I'm working on. But this other option that says show pitches from the scale assistant, this is a fantastic thing that Cubase gives us. We can set a scale and then only hear the notes from that scale. When I play this C harmonic minor now, you get that very unique sound. And this is a great way to introduce yourself to what are the differences with some of these scales. Let's use an oriental scale. And we can just click and drag on the keys when we do this. We can use this to draw notes into our project and know that we're only going to hit notes that are part of the scale. Just in terms of experimenting with sounds, you can spend a long time going through these different examples and hearing what they sound like. Let's take a Phrygian scale. Play through that. Let's take a blues scale and play through that. Just a great option to become familiar with that you will use if you really understand it. Another great option, right out of the gate, I'm going to change tracks here. We have all of our tools available. We right click and we have a tool here you may have used or you may have never used. Looks like a little knife and it says trim. 
allows us to basically cut our MIDI notes wherever we want. If I click and drag over these MIDI notes and this diagonal shape and let go, it makes a clean slice just like that. If I want to do the same thing, make a diagonal slice like that, but instead of cutting off the end, which it does by default, if I hold my Alt key before I let go of it, it now slices off the beginning. A fantastic option when you want to make some kind of interesting custom sounds. We take this piano, listen to what happens if I trim off just the beginning at an angle and do that to every chord, holding my Alt key as I make these slices. Listen to what it did to this piano sound now. Think about what that would take to manually shorten every MIDI note a little bit, move it around, all these kind of adjustments for every one of these. This is just a great little tool to do some very unique editing in this key editor. All right, I want to share with you some of the very useful options that we have up on the toolbar, but also some that are kind of unclear and can make it hard to get the most out of this. So let's try to clear some of that up. One thing to be aware of when you're using the key editor is that you can work on more than one thing at a time. If we go back to our project for a second, and I take a simple MIDI event, and I open it up. It's pretty basic, once you've gotten comfortable with this, to take notes and move them around, make some basic edits, and carry out whatever you're trying to do to correct or improve your MIDI performances. Where things become more interesting and at the same time more complicated and confusing is the idea that you can actually work on more than one thing at a time. For example, I can select both of these events, open them up, and now I have both of these events in the MIDI editor. Going further than that, I can select all of these events on all these different tracks, open them up, and have all of these notes all laid out on the MIDI editor. Some of these notes may overlap each other, making it hard to see which notes are on top, which note you're affecting. And this is where you need to have a really good working understanding of what's going on here to really effectively do any task at all. We look up on the toolbar, there's a button up here that's called the Part Editing Mode. It has a little drop down list. It gives you the option to choose all of your parts, just the active part, or all the parts on the active track. Right away, that terminology itself can be a little off-putting. That's a lot to take in and understand what they're saying. Let me give you a few examples and try to bring clarity to all of this. First thing to understand with the MIDI editor, click is king. What I mean by that is no matter what you've set up here in these editing modes or anything else that leads you to believe that there's some way to make selective editing of some kind, if you specifically click on something, you can edit that. There is no kind of filtering or option that overrides that particular option. If I come down to these hi-hats and I click on one, I can now edit whatever I've clicked on. I can change its length, I can change its pitch, I can do just about anything I want to it because I've clicked on it. If I go up to this bass part and I click on it, I can now change this bass part, I can move it, I can take it into other parts. Once you've clicked on something, you override every other kind of filtering. Where these options begin to take effect, is when you're doing some kind of thing where you're clicking and dragging either over single notes or groups of notes or multiple parts, something where you're not clicking specifically on a note, but rather affecting groups of notes or selecting it by dragging. Or if you're working with your computer keyboard and you do like a control all or a control A where you select things, that's where these options begin to have control. Now let's see what these options are presenting us. Our first option says, all parts. So if I select that option, and in this particular example I have here, I have some MIDI notes from a synthesizer, I have some MIDI notes from a bass part, and I have some MIDI notes from a hi-hat. Three different sounds, three different parts, and because I have selected the option to work on all parts at the same time, if I click and drag over my synth, my bass, and some of my hi-hats, all of those parts become highlighted. I can now perform some kind of function on all of these notes at the same time. I can lengthen them, I can move their pitch, I can do any number of things the MIDI editor allows me to do. If I go to this next option that says only the active part, select that one, now I have a drop-down field next to it where we can actually pick out what part we want to be the active part. When I drag my mouse over them, they select and I would be able to perform some kind of edit. On the other hand, because this is the only active part, take my mouse and drag over these notes, but also come down and drag over my hi-hat notes, only the notes from the bass part that were designated as active will highlight. The hi-hats are ignored. Even though I've dragged my mouse over and made a selection of them, the MIDI editor is gonna ignore those. If I come up to the synth part above it, 
Click and drag over that and come down and drag over some of the bass parts. Again, only the bass parts are going to get selected and the synth parts are going to get ignored. It will only choose that way what I've designated as the active part. Beautiful thing about this is that if you have lots of MIDI notes, and especially if they're on top of each other, for example, this bass note says F sharp 2. There could be three other synthesizers behind that that say F sharp 2. And unless I took that note and moved it, I wouldn't even know what was behind it. But by choosing the active part, and only the active part, you can freely make selections and know that only the part that I've selected here, visible or not visible, that's the one that's going to be affected and allow me to carry out other MIDI tasks and then the third option we're given here if I hit this drop down arrow it says all parts on active track make a selection on that the active track is determined when we go back over to this left inspector again this shows me all my MIDI tracks right here one that has the underline that's the active track so once again I go up to the one that says kick for example select that that word now has an underline under it again if I click and drag over all of these notes bass notes hi-hat notes anything that i have here visible the only thing that's going to highlight is the kick drum as designated over here in the active track if i change it to the bass track and i click and drag over all kinds of notes here the only thing that's going to highlight is the bass track this allows us to have all kinds of things in our midi editor even things that we can't even see necessarily and yet have complete control over what's going to get affected or what we actually change, either by the active parts or the active track, or if we want to designate all the parts. At some point, you're probably going to start exploring what's called the controller lanes. This is the lower screen area. Where you get all kinds of graphical information. When we're using just a single controller, I can expand it however I want. As I click on notes, typically that will also select options down in your controller area but there are so many things to explore when you start dealing with controllers when you come over to any controller lane you have a drop down list and when you click on that you're able to see all the different things that are available in this case it shows velocity the new play probability and velocity variance as we move down the list you get the more typical things of pitch bend or modulation if you've never used any of these you just want to experiment with them but one thing to be aware of when you're working in this controller area Steinberg has decided to give you four different areas where there are menus if you left click in this visibility you get a list of options to choose with various results if you right click on this same menu you get a different set of options that will perform slightly different functions if you move down this area towards the bottom you'll see a plus sign if you click on that you get another menu that resembles some of the other menus but it has some slightly different options and then finally if you go to the side of that there's a drop down arrow that gives you some more choices from a menu with some slightly different options. If you're trying to do something in the controller lane, chances are it's going to be in one of these menus, as long as you know that you have four different menus that you could possibly search through. Let me show you some of the highlights of these options, things that will help you right away. The first thing to understand is that you can have more than one controller lane. In this case, I have this velocity controller lane. When I change these graphs down here, it changes how hard the notes are actually hit. I find with some MIDI notes, that makes a tremendous difference, especially with percussion and drum sounds. You may hit them very hard, and you'll definitely hear them louder. You may hit them very soft, and that'll make a big difference. As you're working with these lanes, and you open this list, you'll see little diamonds by the words of the controllers that are actually being used in your particular song. In my case, I have diamonds by velocity, articulations, and then one down by modulation. If I click on any of these diamond highlights, that controller lane changes to reflect whatever that is. Now it's changed to articulations. If I go to the last one that says modulation, I click on that. Now it's changed to modulation, and I can edit or redraw my modulation data. As you're working on your data, you can click on these to move and change them however you need, but be aware they provided a pretty fast option. If you have a mouse wheel, I'm starting right at the top from velocity, and if I turn my mouse wheel, it will scroll through every one of those controller lanes very quickly so I don't really need to open up the list. I can quickly just move my mouse wheel until I see what I'm looking for. In this case, the modulation. If I spin a little bit more, now I can see the articulations. So I can get around quickly to whatever I need without having to sit here and open this up and make these choices. They give us another option if we come down to one of these other menus, this plus button. And we have one here that says show the used controllers, which in my case, I have three different controllers. If I click on that, all three of those controllers now come into view on one screen. I can adjust these window sizes if I want to. And now I can see all of my used controller data and I can work on it all at one time. If I want to simplify this window again, I can go back to this plus sign. I can tell it to hide all the controller lanes, completely take them out of view. 
Or I can say, show me only the velocity, and now I'm back to the single lane where I can start over again. Another option you're going to want to know, when I switch to my pencil tool, if you notice, everything looks like little steps and is pretty drastic as it moves along. You have the option if you go to this other drop-down list on the right, and you take the option that says type of new controller events, you can choose either step or ramp, and right now it's on step. If I choose ramp, now when I draw things, they are smooth and connected, and that's an option you're going to want to be aware of, so you can change your controller data the way you want it. While we're looking at these lists, if we don't want a long list of choices like this, another option we can do on this right menu is to set up what controllers are actually visible. It brings up a screen, you can check the visible ones and make them hidden, or vice versa, allowing you to customize this screen so it has fewer or more choices depending on what you want. You have options when you right-click on these menus to select all your events, so if you've written things, you can select them all, delete if you want to delete them. And if you have all your available lanes and you want to remove just one of them, right click on that option, tell it to remove this lane. If you use this option a lot or a particular configuration of it, ultimately you can come down to the right arrow and tell it to add a preset where you can give it a name. And then every time you need that particular view, you can just call that up. So in summary, the MIDI editor, or as it's formerly known, the key editor in Cubase is a world of options just waiting to be explored. And one thing I can assure you, any time that you spend becoming familiar with its various functions and gaining proficiency with its overall operation is truly time well spent. I'll see you next time. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we had a look around the MIDI editor of Cubase. We started out looking how to select our tracks, looked at the pitch visibility options and the scale assistant. We examined some of the selected toolbar buttons and then we finished off looking at the controller lanes and how we can navigate those in various ways. As we continue our journey, looking at all our different creative options and the tools that we have available to us, as always, it's great to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next video.